Mm. Anyway, what else do you want to ask me? Oh, yeah, I don't know. What else can we talk about? We've got loads going on here. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about the UFO stuff because mm. in the yeah. course of your investigations, mm. you did get access to some really quite amazing places, didn't you? Well, we, in out of the blue, we, we, we sort of went around the world looking at some of the best UFO cases you know, ever. And did you not go to Roswell? And Roswell was not particularly interesting because it's oh. so polluted. It's another one right. of those things. Yeah. We're not quite right. sure what's going on. Really. Yeah. I mean, something strange is going on, that's for sure. But Lots whether of people they... dressed up in alien costumes. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the alien in, the alien, the alien. Um, which I was supposed to stay in, but oh, my yeah. GPS turned itself off when Just I was heading well. down the highway to Just go and well. stay there, and I wouldn't have got there till midnight. So you I, missed I the opportunity of buying a rubber alien. And yeah. Yeah, but no, but it was it was very weird. The people that I was I was it was actually when I'd done the talk up at the um, Noetic Sciences and I'd been held up, and I was driving on my own down the highway, and the people that I'd been staying with had said, "Don't go there." You know, oh, Dan. No, it wasn't oh, Dan. It right. was um, Sergio. Uh, uh, Sergio, uh, not Sergio Leone. <laughs> not, not, not that. Not that. Yeah, Sergio. Sergio. Yeah, I know uh, Sergio. Yeah. 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 And uh, he, they. They advised me really don't go, it's too late, and you really don't want to be a woman on your own driving down it's, you know, mm. Area 51. And uh, I was saying, Oh, it's fine, I'm protected, I'm guided, I'm going to be absolutely fine. And then just as I was getting to that part of the highway, my GPS just turned itself off. So I didn't know which turning to take, <laughs> completely turned itself off. And the thing with my GPS, it was the one on my phone, and it wasn't, it couldn't turn itself. It couldn't go back on unless I had GPS and I said Wi-Fi. Mm. And there was no way of getting Wi-Fi back on. I had to turn my data roaming on or be in a place where there was Wi-Fi. So it was impossible for it to come back on. But as I literally a five mile stretch, I was going down um, and it's Highway 5 and I thought, OK, well, I don't know where to turn off. So I'm not going to randomly go in there and get lost mm. in the middle of the night mm -hmm. out trying to find it. So maybe I'm meant to go straight down towards LA and I'll, I was heading to Phoenix, so I'll, I'll turn left at the bottom there. And I got about five miles beyond the, the, the turn off point and my GPS turned itself back on. Oh, well, you weren't meant to go there? With no, with no Wi-Fi, which is impossible. You were trying to find Roswell? I was, I was going to stay, I had booked to stay at the Alien, at the alien Inn. You got it, right. And my GPS turned itself off and as anyway, soon as I was passed, you didn't, you didn't miss a great so I wasn't you didn't meant miss a great to go. Deal. I don't think. Cause but I do want to go. I got the message that I wasn't meant to go on my own in the middle of the night. Which probably wasn't a good yeah. idea to be somebody that's, you know, but open the, to stuff. And the, whoever the spies are and, you know, energetic guards that are in that area, I'm sure that there is stuff going on. And I'm sure people have kind of disappeared around there. So I just think the, the English Roswell is a lot more interesting. The so-called Bentwaters Rendlesham Forest case. Right, yes. <coughs> which occurred Can in we the talk 80s. a little bit about that one? Because that's... Well, it's a lot closer to the yeah. present moment, and it was a, you know it was witnessed by members of the, the base because this is basically a dual United States Air Force base, British Air Force base, and right. in between them there's a little forest, foresty area. And uh, in the nine, 1980, on just just on before Christmas, they had a lot of sightings, and uh, basically the, the the base was being checked out by a UFO. Really. Right. And what's so extraordinary about that is the UFO actually landed in between the two bases. Right. And they sent out uh, a team of investigators who were told it was probably a crashed aircraft and to go and check it out. Right. And as they approached the crash site, their electronic communications started failing, which is quite common around UFOs. Yeah. And so they had to sort of like send back messages. And so eventually only three of those guys... There we go. <laughs> you run out of juice. <laughs> Lights off. Lights off. Oh dear, that's it then, is it? No, carry on. No. But we've been in the dark, were we? Well, I asked them to blow the light if... <clears throat> Did you? Right, give me that. <laughs> light you up. <laughs> so, so our light's blown, so we've got our evidence, yeah. carry on. <laughs> our light's blown, <laughs> as requested, thank you for that. <laughs> I was feeling really weird there for a minute, so, yeah. I, I, it's like the energy got really intense and then yeah. it went. Yeah, yeah. Come, if you talk about UFOs, I'll go away. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk yes. about UFOs. Let's talk about it's UFOs. really it's getting too busy in here. Mm. Yeah. So tell us about Rendlesham. Rendlesham Forest case, <clears throat> or the Bentwaters case, is also known as the yeah. called the British UF, British Ro Roswell case, which is because it's such an important case. Uh, we interviewed most of the main players in that, in the sense that they were. This was a code of nineteen eighty. Um, 
UFOs sort of basically buzzing around over this joint uh, American and British Air Force base. And this was at the time of the Cold War, so there were a lot of nuclear weapons on the base. Right. So anything sort of like interfering with the base was like a big deal. Um, but what happened was that over a period of three days, there was a lot of UFO activity, and what was so special about that case was the UFO actually landed and was intercepted by a team that went out to investigate what had actually happened. Right. So we interviewed uh, the three guys who actually went there and saw this craft that had landed in, yeah. in the forest in the middle of the night. <clears throat> and it's really interesting because these are military witnesses. It was never meant to come out what they had seen. It was, there was a, the base deputy commander, Colonel Holt, wrote an internal memo to the MOD about what he'd seen and that was never meant to get out. Uh, but some American researcher got hold of it through the Freedom of Information Act, which we don't happen over here. I'm right. Right. These mm. Americans have to get hold of it. And it, got, it went to the public domain, and then sort of like News of the World were over it, and all that tabloids got hold of it. And what was really interesting about that case was that there was physical evidence, so that the, where this craft had actually landed, it, it had created impressions. Wow. And that there were like the, the Ministry of Defence's own in, internal intelligence investigations into that showed that there were very high, well, there were higher than normal levels of radiation around right. the craft. And so what was interesting was that the, the actual description of the craft was it's a sort of like basically like a very large car, um, the size of it, uh, but it was sort of like a triangular shaped craft and super smooth to the touch because they actually got to touch it. Right. And it also had these hieroglyph, sort of hieroglyphic or non-human sort of human alphabet on the outside of it. Right. Oh, and wow. he was able to touch this. And he, he had a very strange experience, this guy called Sergeant Jim Penniston. Um, he, well, I won't sort of go into that because it's quite, quite involved. But eventually what happened was that he took photographs of it and then after about half an hour, this craft started to power up and it sort of just lifted off and they, they said we adopted a defensive position <laughs> which means they actually shot themselves and hit, <laughs> yeah, hit the ground and this thing just hovered, hovered and just basically started manoeuvring through the forest and then he said within a blink of an eye yeah. it went gone wow. so fast so wow. fast so and that's super interesting it hit the jump to light speed yeah, yeah. exactly wow exactly Wow. So, I mean, as far as I know, you know, I mean, we still don't have the technology to, 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 do, do, that. to do that. It's yeah. just, it's not really within our capacity. Yeah. That is amazing. So, um, so that's, that's one of the best cases. And what's interesting is that the Penniston, not Penniston, the other guy, Burroughs, he had a lot of health problems after that. Right. Because uh, he'd obviously been exposed to something from the craft. And they, for a long time, he tried to sue the government, the American government, to get sort of, you know, co cover his medical expenses. And, right. and they said, no, 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 no. And eventually they actually gave in and it sort of admitted the event was real and that he was therefore, you know, mm. he was uh, permitted to have compensation. Wow. Wow. Well, that's evidence in and of itself, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, yeah. they've exactly. given yeah. compensation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what's interesting is that there was a third witness, there was a fourth witness, who was a guy called Larry Burroughs. No, not Larry Burroughs, what's his name? Um, probably best not even to mention his name. But anyway, he was, he was, claiming that he had seen these basically aliens come out of the craft. And his, his story was drastically different okay. from the ones that, with the guys that we'd interviewed. And all the other people were sort of saying, don't trust this guy, yeah. he's dodgy. So we interviewed him, but we didn't put it in the film. Okay. Then when we screened the film, when the film was documentary was finished, we screened it in Washington uh, for a press event. And the base deputy commander of Remington Forest turned up, um, Colonel Holt. And I asked him, you know, what about this guy? You know, what did he think about this guy? And yeah. What his story and what have you? And he said, I've got two words for you: narco hypnosis. So what what he was referring to was that the because after the event, the Air Force Office of Special Investigations, who was their internal invest, you know, intelligence, yeah. came in to investigate the whole event. Right. <clears throat> and what apparently they did, at least that's what Colonel Holt was saying, was that. They used uh, hypnosis and you know, drugs and hypnosis right. to implant false memories into his head, right. yeah. so that he'd go around saying these sort of crazy yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 it's like yeah. a smokescreen. Yeah. yeah. To Absolutely. discredit disinformation. Dis discredit. discredit the information. Yeah. They must use this all the time. Yeah. Right? But again, but this is the thing no. that happened with Roswell, wasn't it? When there were the stories of a craft landing and some saying that they found bodies, and then some really bad black and white 
very almost B movie style well, the, 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 uh, the, images the of an alien video. Or yeah. Yeah, well, I, I did a program for the BBC on that. You know, yeah. This guy, I forgot what his name now, but you know when that came out, I was actually at the screening. It was in the sort of right. it was screened for the press. Yeah. And I was there. Right. And then when I looked at it, I thought, well, that's a piece of shit. Yeah. Honestly. That is such a dodgy piece of rubbish. God, so now we've got evidence of brainwashing and evidence of, well, yeah. That was, yeah. you know, told um, evidence. That was not made by yeah. the, that was not the military who did that. It was just an independent just group an independent. who were basically trying to make a fast buck. Yeah. yeah. So, but the military, obviously, does, I have a colleague who wrote a book called Mirage Men, which is a very interesting study of how the American military used the UFO subject as a sort of smokescreen to cover their more exotic aerospace yeah. technologies. Yeah, right? and again, I was going to talk about that because I know that, obviously in the research, because I've been looking into this stuff for you know many years as well, and there were even talks of technology and whether this technology originally came from, you know, UFOs that mm. had landed or yeah. whether it was just developments, you know, we yeah. know that, you know, it was science and, uh, you know, there's often stuff that's going on behind the scenes that we have no idea about, but that there had been some kind of almost flying saucer type technology, hovercraft, you know, mm. um, yeah, vehicles yeah, yeah. that were able to move. That even Hitler apparently was working with some the technology. Germans, the Germans, the Germans, definitely, the Germans definitely had. Um, that they flying had disc technology, they had flying but disc it was technology. it was probably a turboprop kind of situation. Mm. It was like you know, conventional technology to make, yeah. to make the disc work. Yeah, but they definitely did develop that stuff. Yeah, um, but you know it was it was quickly they didn't have a chance to implement you know, to use it. Yeah. and basically they destroyed absolutely everything after but before so the Allies. They say. Well, so they say. There's, there's, this is a whole really interesting area, but let's let's go back to sort of like wh whether they've actually got stuff from recovered crashes. Yeah. Right? So let's say that there's been a number of different crashes over the years, yeah. uh, which is kind of remarkable if you think about it. That the super advanced technology and they crash. I know. Uh, you know, a lot of times they're actually shot down. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. the energy is obviously different on the earth. Gravity right. is so going to be they, different. You know, they made mistakes like yeah, of course. Yes. So, you know, yeah. weather. And things they're like only that. aliens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Exactly. Human, but they just <laughs> precisely. So let's assume that and there's sort of evidence for a number of different crashes. Yeah. Roswell is quite problematic, but anyway. So there's a, there was certainly the crash in Virginia, which is um, in uh, Brazil, and basically that these farmers saw this UFO cigar shaped thing, sort of like smoke coming out the back. It was in trouble. Right. The next day, these aliens start popping up, and they actually people. This you know the, the interview is done with these small. There were like these teenagers who'd come out from a cleaning job right. and they'd seen this little creature, you know, hiding in a sort of like ruined building. And they went back to their mum and they said, Oh, we've seen this thing, it's the devil, because they're Catholics, right? right. So it's mm -hmm. always the devil, yeah. right? And she said, Oh, it must be an escaped animal. She calls the fire brigade who sorts that out. They went down and they just found this basically humanoid alien there. Wow. Who the, the fire brigade, they just grabbed the guy who grabbed this alien. Um, promptly died of septicemia the next day and they buried his body and wouldn't let his mother come anywhere near it. Wow. And then the military moved in and contained the area and they found they recovered three extraterrestrials and wow. it just sort of got out, you know. So basically, and also, so what happened to the craft? Yeah. Right? So. And what happened to the extraterrestrials? Well, they died. Apparently. Died or? Yeah, I don't think they were in very were good shape. They clearly weren't in very good shape. No. So, but, but basically, so the, the story behind that was that the US flew in a sort of galaxy you know, transporter. Yeah. And yeah. that's it. And so yeah. obviously had some arrangements. Oh, it was a wind <clears throat> balloon. I think yeah. that I think that they that they have some deal with the Brazilians where far, you know. I think the Americans basically do this with with countries mm -hmm. where they have you know, special yeah. arrangements where they'll just yeah. scoop up the, the alien stuff and take it back the to the bases. Just take you know. it away. Yeah. Yeah. So then that begs the question, what do they have they managed to actually so we can say that it's, it's highly likely that they've recovered some of the technology. Yeah. Now, the argument is it's a bit like saying, well, what would a sort of medieval person make of a digital watch? Mm -hmm. Would they be able to replicate that in that technology? No way. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's so advanced. Unless they have somebody in their arena who is a forward-thinking, open-minded, yeah, very psychic person with, with abilities. You know, yeah. You've got somebody that is very... I, don't, I mean, they wouldn't even understand electricity, so they'd have a yeah. hard time understanding digital watch. Yeah. They'd know it was a watch, and that's about it. Yeah. Everything yeah. else would be mysterious. It's almost like not way. possible. Yeah. Like, it's not, so, yeah. so, the, so the argument against them saying, well, the alien technology could be so far advanced that we'd be in a similar position. Yeah. Puzzled. But, you know, curious. So anyway, so the other argument is that, you know, they let's say they've had about 50 years of this and they've got, so they've had, 
they would throw enormous resources at this. Of course. Because anyone who can replicate alien technology would yeah. dominate the planet. Yeah. So there's no doubt that that will be a very high agenda. Yeah. And I'm sure that's going on. But whether they've been able to replicate the energy, and certainly the energy sources, and this is what you know, Dr. Stephen Greer, who I must admit I have very little time for, talks about yeah. in great detail, is that the, you know, the, big, the big conspiracy in the UFO subject is the power source of these things would obviously not be jet fuel, would yeah. not be rocket fuel. No. It would be some form of free energy, mm. right? So, you know, like using zero-point energy and extracting energy from the vacuum and all this stuff. So yeah. it would rad- if we got hold of it and we could replicate it, then it would be the end of the fossil fuel industry. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another reason why... So the why money and the greed and the hoarding... They don't, they don't want any of that coming out, do they? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think there's a, there's a lot of... From this, I mean, whether they manage to do it or not... You know, yeah. it's, it's another matter, but certainly that issue yeah. is a valid one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think this, this, the word itself, you know, unidentified flying object. I do think that some of these objects may be more, you know, earthly based than some people think. That some of them are going to be technologies that governments are experimenting with. Mm. But I also then come back to the idea that it would be absolutely ridiculous. I'm very naive to think that we were the only ones that were Absolutely. existing in this universe, in this galaxy. Ludicrous. It would be ludicrous, you know, that this is the only But nobody planet, believes that anymore. Well, I mean, mainstream science, nobody believes like that. 50 years ago, they would have said, oh, no, I don't know about that. But now, the consensus is amongst the scientific community, yes, there's life out there. Yeah. But the problem is, how does it get from there to here? Yeah. Because it can't travel fast and speed of light, and there are huge problems yeah. around it. Yeah. But you know, my standard answer to that is simply, well, you know, they're probably a million years ahead of us. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's the end of that. That's the, that's yeah. your answer to that question, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. We think, you know, we're, there's a, a huge arrogance among humanity that we we know it all. We know it all. We don't know anything. Anyway, we science is pr- progresses. You know, it's a, it's a, we, we, this is the best theory we've got at the moment. Yeah. yeah. That's what science yeah. is, but it's not in stone. Yeah. yeah. You know. So, and we'll find we're all ready theories about how we can get travel fast and the speed of light yeah. you can actually accelerate space time itself yeah. Yeah. rather than you moving you accelerate space time yeah. and there's yeah. no upper limit to the acceleration yeah. of space time yeah so we already got ways of thinking around this and when after all 200 years ago we were all going around in little you know yeah. you know horse and buggies yeah, exactly and, uh, and it's, not that, it's not that long ago no, no it's nothing so give us another thousand yeah. years and we'll be doing it. We'll have we'll to interstellar drive, te- and warp drive teleporting, thing. and yeah, you know, for sure. I'm just going to de- dematerialize, rematerialize thinner. Um, <laughs> Tim, how do you know much about the um, this idea of like alien intervention, like where there have mm. been planned nuclear attacks mm. and the bombs gone missing? It's in or, the film. Yeah, amazing. Watch amazing. out the blue. Basically, we have a very interesting case now of the blue, <clears throat> which is. Um, Basically, UFOs are very interested in nuclear installations. Yeah, yeah. have been for you know ever since we started going nuclear. A lot of people think that the modern UFO age began with the explosion of the first nuclear weapon, atomic bomb, in 1945, and this sort of like alerted them and thought, Christ, these these primitives have now got nuclear weapons. We better check them out because it's getting dangerous. And I, often I think that the combination of nuclear weapons and rocket technology would make us quite interesting to study. Yeah. Mm. Because they'll think, as we just said, you know, in 100 years, 200 years' time, we will have similar technology to them, perhaps. Yeah. But we're very, very primitive. Yeah. And so I would be keeping an eye on the, the And we're natives. dangerous. Like, the way... Right. It, I mean, the way our, that our main activity is killing each other. Man likes right? to blow up. Man, I was watching something on the Inquisition last night and just how much bloodshed... Ghastly. ...was, you know, especially when you repress the feminine... And repressed women. That's true. Not much love and nurturing going yeah, on. It's boys true. with their toys. This so is very true. It's, it, I think it does make us very primitive. Yeah, it's stupid. Very primitive. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. let's test out this bomb and blow up half the planet. It's a great yeah. idea, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Actually, so we're, in a, we're basically in a very adolescent phase of our development. Mm. And, and so, you know, I would think in many ways we might even be quarantined. Yeah. yeah. There's, so they wouldn't be happy to uh, to get you know, let us get too far out. Yeah. We have you know we'll we'll see about like that. Those but... naughty children are playing yeah. with those yeah, naughty keep toys them in, again. Keep them in the, in the school ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. until yeah. they've evolved. Until they've evolved a little bit. more, and they yeah. start to learn more about love and compassion and exactly. kindness to one another. Exactly. But there have been cases, haven't there, where trials yeah. or bombs well, we'll go have back to, to go back. Off. Yeah, yeah, basically. So back to that was it. This was in 1975. So again, high to the Cold War. It was bounced from Air Force Base, which is in the States, and uh, we interviewed the, uh, the launch control officers who were responsible for n- launching nuclear weapons in yeah. case of an attack. And there are two of them, they have two keys, and just in case one goes mad, the other one shoots him, and stuff like that. You know, there's always two of them. 
<clears throat> and so they're very sober individuals. They're not yeah. prone to making up hallucinations and stories no. or worrying anyway. So he was a very interesting guy called uh, Salas, <clears throat> Robert Salas. And he described that he was down literally in the bunker one morning uh, when the top side guard, <clears throat> who's sort of like security upstairs, yeah. uh, told him, you're not going to believe this, but there's a large orange disc hovering over the silo. What shall I do? And he, he sort of says, don't do anything. Pray. You know, don't do anything. You know, I'm going to speak to my commander in chief, right? And I will get back to Wave you. Wave a white flag. <laughs> <laughs> and what Sorry. happened was that in the space, that, you know, like a, a minute or so, he was trying to get hold of his commander in chief, the entire arsenal of nuclear weapons, 22, I think, uh, went offline. Because they're, wow. they're ready to launch 24 7. And they just went bang, dead, dead as a doornail, right? And then this UFO went. Gone. Thank like you. that. It's basically, like, Wherever don't you even think about it, children. So, yeah. you know, it, it, inter- interpret it how you will. Yeah. Yeah. But so it seems to me that they were just saying, well, you know. Interdimensional first, peacekeepers. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When our, our, yeah. This may be your most powerful technology, but we can switch it off like a light bulb. Yeah. And that's the thing, when we've had, sort of, you know, other, other clients or we've had experiences where we've communicated with these beings in other dimensions, that's one of the things that has been repeated time and time again is that they are not allowed to intervene, they are not allowed to get involved, that they are monitoring and watching from a distance. However, mm. the only kind of yeah. you know, caveat to that is that if it gets too close and it's going to get too dangerous, that they do have permission to just go in and, and stop it. And stop it. Mm. Yeah. That's reassuring. I w- yeah. I'm not sure I would depend on them to do that. I mean, well, why no, didn't they stop it when they need when they need? Because maybe the world needed, needed to, to learn, learn, learn the lesson, absolutely, and just see the horrors that Because it's got to bring to shit, like to the but it hasn't happened again, right? right? Yeah. They yeah. wouldn't be too happy about that yeah. lesson. It was like an awakening moment, Hiroshima, I think. So. It was like a lot of people started kind of going... Yeah. Oh, I think I think <laughs> mankind needed what to know how dangerous shit. that technology was. We were heading was. down a road, and you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to say that controversial as it is that I'm a great fan of nuclear weapons. Mm. Because basically. Do you tell why? <laughs> well, because because if we hadn't had nuclear weapons, you would have had a third world war between the Russians and the Americans. Yeah, maybe it's the, the fear it's of the having only, them that stopped undoubtedly it. Undoubtedly, yeah. yeah. because they were the That's Americans were ready to invade it. Russia straight after the, the yeah. defeated the Nazis. Yeah. So they were they were done. Lots of generals like Patton were saying, well, "Let's get them now." While they, you know, we yeah. we got the bomb. Let's get them because yeah. they're only a mere. Then pain they had the, the bomb later. too, and then it's like, oh. Yeah, but not for five years. It took yeah. them a while to get the bomb. So yeah. they, we had a huge. They had a huge advantage. So anyway, the point is that there was they were kind of ready to go, and I think without nuclear weapons, it would have happened. Yeah, maybe. Because those yeah. two ideologies were so opposed to each other that it was only nuclear weapons that stopped another, th- another war. Well, it's a bit dicey at the moment too, isn't it? There's a lot of anti-Russia propaganda going on in the news. It's all very weird. It's, all, well, it's not just propaganda. Yeah. Mm, I would say yeah. the Russians have... I mean, you know, Putin's well dodgy, you know, yeah. let's face it. Or is he? <coughs> but I think they're or all, they're all dodgy, dodgy both sides. Yeah, is he like, being portrayed as dodgy? There's this, like, and media and campaign, like, that's yeah. playing out. That's like, I don't really... You yeah, know, I've got really a journalism be, background too. I don't believe anything I, I see on the news. I don't see on the news. <laughs> Like, well, oh, you, you, you get conflicting reports, you know, about all of these people, and I think it depends on what side you're on. You know, they talk about, don't they, that history is always written by the the winners, the victors. The victors yeah. So I think we need to be just open yeah, to I mean, the fact I mean, that any, not all is as it seems. Anything that they're accusing the Russians of, we are either doing or certainly capable. Of. Well, and exactly, that's, that's, and that's yeah. the reality. throughout history, yeah. there has always had to be a. a an enemy, because mm. then it gives permission mm. to spend loads of money on arms, to mm. spend loads of money on mm. weapons. Mm. If you keep the people in fear, then mm. people are going to be quite happy mm. to invest mm. and, and you know have their governments mm. spending all of this money. And you can guarantee that the governments are the ones that are actually reaping yeah. the benefits because they will be financially invested in all get of me, those Get things. me in, and another time we can talk about the Kennedy assassination. Yeah, well, that, 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 that would be for another show. But that's Absolutely. again, Love to that's, get all about, Absolutely. that's all about how... Yeah, the military industrial complex took yeah. over at that particular yeah, point. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can talk to you for days and days, Tim. Mm-hmm. So we're definitely going to get you back in again. But right. for now, we just want to say a huge thank you for your insight and your research. And, you know, yeah. your, I'm going to go home and watch all of these yeah, now. These extraordinary movies. We're going to put links to yeah. where you can actually where you can purchase and get access. 
And he's also www.timcolmanmedia.com. Timcolmanmedia.com. Yeah. And we'll, we'll share all the links below. But absolutely amazing conversation. We'd also love to hear your feedback on this topic. Like, what do you believe? What have you seen? Are there any sightings or abductions or anything you want to share with us? Any um, should be flooded. Any spiritual experiences yeah. that you want to share that are maybe evidence based for you? And um, but on that note, we just want to thank you for being part of our community and for watching. And thank you, Tim. Thank, thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.